Is this Christmas? Well, okay, there was a, there was a leg legitimate guy called St. Nicholas, and uh, he's got uh, true history, and he was a good, good guy and everything. But this probably has more to do with Christmas than St. Nick. Cows eating hay and munching and probably making a stink. And, uh, yeah. So I, th I think when we think about Christmas, sometimes we just need to think about kind of how things really were kind of back in those days. And sometimes we have this picture or we have these experiences, sometimes even memories that we have. But truthfully, God came down in the form of a baby for all of us. And it wasn't the perfect combination of situation. It might not even have been quite the silent night that we sing about sometimes. But God came down and entered into our world. And entered into our world. It wasn't God was just rearranging everything and making sure this was perfect and peaceful and quiet night. Okay, now, Jesus. No, there was a lot more going on that was kind of tumultuous during those times. And we're going to look at some of those in a, in a little bit. But, you know, sometimes I think in our lives, we can think about Christmas. And I know for me, I have a lot of nostalgic feelings when it comes to Christmas. Excuse me, I have a lot of good memories thinking about uh, some of those experiences that I've had over the years with my family and sometimes missing family and being away from them. But I know not everybody has a lot of good feelings when it comes to Christmas. And I know that a lot of us here in this room today, we are a long ways away from our family and the ones that we know and love. Sometimes I know some of us are away from our Moms and dads and brothers and sisters, nephews, cousins. Some of us are away from our kids, other countries. And sometimes when we think about the Christmas time, it can bring a lot of, oh, oh, I miss them so much. Or maybe you haven't had any good experiences. Maybe, maybe your Christmases have, haven't been so so peaceful and so full of happiness and joy. But the true story of Christmas was God coming into a situation that was less than ideal. He came into a situation that was really less than ideal. Sometimes we hear some of the songs that we sing around Christmas time. We, we began with some songs. From now on, our troubles will be miles away. Anybody heard that, that, that line from a song? Have yourself a Merry Christmas. From now on, our troubles will be miles away. Sometimes during Christmas, our troubles are sitting right next to us at the table. <laughs> They're not miles away. They're right there with us, right? It's not always all oh, happy and dreamy, you know. Sometimes they're right there in our face. Um, it's the most wonderful time of the year. It's the hap happiest season of all. Sometimes you hear those words and I'm like, Okay, yeah, in a kind of a dreamy sort of world, yeah, it can be. But faced with the reality, you know, missing friends, missing family, you know, maybe there's some tensions, maybe there's some unresolved conflict going on, maybe there's financial pressures, maybe you're dealing with health issues, health problems, and sometimes those things can be right there. But I want to talk just for a few minutes about the first Christmas. And I, I want to emphasize some points that show us that things weren't perfect in those days either. Uh, most of these points are from Luke chapter 2 and Matthew chapter 1. We don't have time to go into all of, all of that and read it all, but I would encourage you to Take some time this week and, and read those two chapters in the Bible. That has the story of Jesus' birth. But let's think about some of the things that happened during Jesus' birth. The first 
is that an angel came to Mary and said, all right, you are engaged to be married to Joseph, but you're going to be, you're going to become pregnant. And Mary, with grace in her heart and love towards God, said, okay, let it be according to your will, God. Little did she know this was going to bring a lot of turmoil into her life. So think about it. She was engaged to Joseph and, and all of a sudden now she's pregnant. She's there amongst her family and she started to show the signs of, of being pregnant. There was, I'm guessing, the Bible doesn't go into a lot of details, but if family is like family is now, there's going to be a lot of scrutiny Questions, doubts, probably some accusations, probably some rejection. Mary, what did you do? Oh, yeah, sure, it was an angel that came to you. Yeah, right. That has never happened before. Holy Spirit, yeah, right, Mary. I mean, let's, let's get real. You know, this is probably some of the stuff that she faced. It wasn't... Silent night happening, you know? It was like, oh, goodness, what's going on, Mary? And it's not just for, you know, a, a short season. It's, you know, for nine months. She was engaged to Joseph. And Matthew, the, the book of Matthew, Matthew chapter 1, it says that Joseph didn't receive a visit from the angel until it was evident that Mary was already pregnant. So there was some stuff going on. He realized that Mary was pregnant. She was showing, basically. And then the angel came to Joseph and, and spoke to him. But he said, he, his plan was, okay, she's my, my, uh, my fiance. He was going to do the honorable thing and divorce her quietly. He was just going to put her away and say, okay, yep, yeah, I'm going to, I love her, but... You know, look what's happened. Uh, I can't explain it, but this is what we're going to do. I'm going to put her aside quietly and divorce her quietly. So this is what, not just what Joseph was facing, but Mary was facing single motherhood, basically, is what she was facing. And then the, the angel came to Joseph, and then he agreed, okay, I'm going to marry her. She's going to be mine, and... We know what happened after that. But then there was a, a decree given by Caesar Augustus. We read in, in Luke chapter 2. All right. Everyone's got to go to their own hometown and register and pay your taxes. So Joseph's like, oh, all right. I'm from Nazareth, which is way up in the north of Israel. But he's, sorry, he's living in Nazareth, but he's from Bethlehem, which is down near Jerusalem in the southern part in Judea. So he's got to travel. And because of the laws at that time, basically Mary was his wife. They were agreed to be married. And so they had to travel all the way down to Bethlehem. And so not only is it rejection and scrutiny from family, now they have financial pressures, having to pay all their bills and their taxes. They are having to travel long distances and all of these things are just adding up. The pressure and the stress and just life is just kind of a big, big whirlwind for all of them during this time. There was a, um, um, a guy from our, from our worship band. How many, how many of you guys know Sing Lee? He, him and his wife, they just had a little baby just this last weekend. And it was their first kid. And it was amazing. Angie went and visited them in the hospital she was telling me how funny it is when you see a new, a new dad and a new mom with a newborn. They're just kind of all like holding it. They don't want to hurt it or drop it. And I said, don't worry. I said to Angie, I said, don't worry about it. Kids are resilient. They you know, you just do whatever they want with them. They'll just kind of bounce back. But new, kid, new parents, they're so like not really sure what to do. Help me. Worried. Am I going to kill this kid? I don't know what's going to happen. You know, I think it's a miracle when parents suddenly realize, man, we can keep a, another human being alive. 
It's pretty amazing. But this is what Joseph and Mary were, were, were dealing with. Not just, not just only a new baby, but they were without their support system. Mary's family was way back up in, in, in Nazareth. They were far away from home. They didn't, have a, uh, they didn't have an appointment at a hospital or a clinic to go to. Joseph was busy trying to find a place to stay, not only worrying about his taxes, but now he can't find a place to stay. He didn't have, he didn't have a doctor there to help him. He didn't have a clinic or a hospital to go to. He's like, I remember, I remember when my firstborn was born, I was so stressed out, and, but I had the whole support system. I had family around. I had doctors there. We were in a hospital. And even then, I was still stressed and uh, praying and coming to tears. God, I don't know what to do. Help me, this and that. I can't even imagine what Joseph was going through during that time. It would have been crazy to, 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 to try and wrap my mind around all this stuff that he was going through. And then, you know, they have the, you have the miraculous story of the angels coming to the shepherds, the kings coming to bring their treasures and to worship Jesus. But then they got death threats from the government. All of a sudden you hear the, the kings take off and Herod says, all right, I'm going to kill every single kid two years old and younger. Oh, my goodness. I don't know. I've never faced death threats before. Now they're wanting to come and kill Mary and Joseph's baby. This was not a peaceful time for them. This was filled with stress and, God, what are we going to do? Probably tons of praying and holding God to his word. God, you said this was going to be a great thing. You know, this is Jesus, the Son of God, Emmanuel, God with us. But look at all this stuff that's, look at all this stuff that's blowing up all around us. And then they had to leave their country. They ran away. They had to go. They were fugitives. They were running from the law, basically. They were, they were uh, um, refugees. They had to run over to Egypt, and they had to live in Egypt for a certain length of time. This was not a very peaceful time in the lives of Mary and Joseph. This was not a peaceful time even in Bethlehem. I think about all of the Children that died during that time. You know, moms and dads crying. Aunts and uncles lost their nephews and nieces. Grandparents now without grandkids. All the kids, two years and older, gone. Soldiers coming. Yikes. This was not the most peaceful of times. We think about it now and we know the wonder. We know the miracles because... This is Jesus. But when we look at this situation and all of the stuff all around, it was a very, very, very difficult time. Joseph and Mary, I wrote a list here. They faced scrutiny, rejection, challenges to their faith, lack of support system, probably a feeling that they were making everything up as they went along. They didn't know how, they didn't know what to do. They faced financial pressures, outside circumstances, pressure from the government, unplanned travel, living in a place that's not their own. But this is where the King of Hope, the Prince of Peace, and the Lord of Joy chose to enter. This is the situation where God found it fit to say, here, this is my son. Here, this is my treasure. This is the baby boy who's going to save the world. And I think it's really cool that God doesn't wait for the perfect time. God doesn't sit and wait, all right, when you got your act all together, then I'll come. No, he brings peace. He brings the source of joy. He brings life into our mess, into our mess. When there's financial trouble, trouble, he can bring the peace. When there's disease and when there's sickness, when there's 
uncertainty, when there's stress, when there's a feeling that you don't have it all together. Okay. The Prince of Peace, the Lord of Joy. God delights in bringing his joy and his peace into our mess. Because God truly believes with all of his heart that what he can do is greater than the mess around us. He truly, truly believes that. And it's true. His power and his life and his joy and his peace, once it's inside of us, the situation around us cannot take that away. It's his peace and his truth and his joy. Jesus said in John 16, verse 33, it says, I have said these things to you that in me you may have peace. In the world you will have tribulation, but take heart, I have overcome the world. He doesn't promise to take away the tribulation. He doesn't promise to take away the stress, but he promises to bring peace into our hearts so that the peace inside of us has victory over the tribulation and the, the pain and the stress that is outside of us. Because truthfully, we can't change the things that are outside of us, but Jesus can change the things that are inside of us. Peace and joy are not things that are outside of us and around us. They are not dependent on the situations, but they are dependent on the things that are happening inside of us. And when Jesus, the Prince of Peace, is with us, then we can walk through and we can live in the miracle. We can live with joy and the Prince of Peace leading us and guiding us and directing us. Christmas is about the arrival of peace and joy into a chaotic and troubled world. That's what we see in the story of Jesus' arrival in Luke chapter 2 and Matthew 1. The arrival of peace, the arrival of the Prince of Peace, the arrival of the Lord of Joy into a chaotic and troubled world. But that's the truth for each one of us as well. If you are here and you are living in a chaotic and troubled world, maybe some of it's from your own doing, maybe some of it's from the situation around you that you just can't help. Today, we celebrate Christmas and we celebrate the arrival of a Savior, the arrival of peace, the arrival of joy. And it's Jesus, the hope of the world. Amen. I began with the Christmas song and I want to finish with the Christmas song. I've been thinking a lot about joy recently and, you know, we sing the world, words, you know, joy to the world. I want to read, I want to read uh, the lyrics from a song. It's called Joyful, Joyful, We Adore You. I'm going to read the first verse and I want to read the last verse. It says, Joyful, Joyful, We Adore You. God of glory, Lord of love, hearts unfold like flowers before you, opening to the sun above. Melt the clouds of sin and sadness, drive the dark of doubt away. Giver of immortal gladness, fill us with the light of day. You know, joy is something that is not something that is, you know, light and you know, dreamy, like all those, I call them, you know, like Jingle Bells and all that stuff. I call them like the, the bubblegum Christmas songs, you know. But the hymns are the stuff that really, I, I love the hymns because they have the truth. They have theology. They have truth. Um, but joy, true joy from God is something that's real. And it's not something that you're always, you know, running around, clicking your heels and all that sort of stuff. But it's something, a contentment and a happiness within you. Similar to peace, but it's, it's like, yeah, God's with me. And even though I 
walk through difficult times, I got God with me. I got joy. I can have peace. Listen to the last verse of this song. It says, Mortals, join the mighty chorus, which the morning star began. God's own love is reigning over us, joining people hand in hand. Ever singing, march we onward, victors in the midst of strife. Even in the middle of strife, we can have victory. We can walk hand in hand with our Savior, walk hand in hand together with other believers. Joyful music leads us sunward in the triumph song of life. Christmas is the arrival of peace and joy in the middle of turmoil and strife. And that's what God has for each of you today. God has for all of us. And I want to encourage you. Today is the 15th. We have 10 days till Christmas. I want to encourage you. Take some time. Take some time each day between now and Christmas. You know, I love the Christmas carols, the lights, and all that stuff. But take some time, shut the music off, and just sit and think about the Prince of Peace. Think about Jesus, the Lord and Savior, who's come for you. He's come for you. And if your life is in turmoil, let him bring peace. Let him bring hope. Let him bring joy. Because he has his life, he has your life in his hands. He's as close as a prayer. He wants to bring you peace and joy. And he will do that this Christmas season. So just take some time, five minutes, ten minutes a day, to love on God, to let him love on you, and to embrace him. You know, we saw pictures of what Christmas really was like. And Christmas wasn't, you know, the perfect Christmas tree with the lights and stuff. It was a dirty stable with stinky cows, probably some sheep with dirty wool and probably stunk a little bit. But they came and they worshiped. Sometimes it takes a little bit of humility. Sometimes we don't want to God, how can you help me? Or I don't know. But sometimes it just takes a little bit of humility and say, God, I need you. God, I love you. God, come and put aside our pride, put aside our fears. You know, when the kings came, here they are. You know, probably got crowns on their heads, royal robes. They humbled themselves. Coming to God sometimes takes humility. The shepherds, the angel said to the shepherds, don't be afraid. Sometimes you might be afraid to come and approach Jesus. But the same message to the shepherds is the same message for us. Don't be afraid. You are welcome. From shepherds to kings, you are welcome. You are welcome to come. Worship the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, the Prince of Peace. Let's all stand up together. I want to just take a a minute or two. And I want you, in your heart, to respond to Jesus. He is here. This is not about a Christmas song. This is about you and the Savior. Come to him. Whether you've been a Christian a long time or a short time or maybe you're not a Christian, God has opened the doors for you. That video that we saw, he has welcomed you as his son, as his daughter. He is the father. So let's reflect on his love, reflect on his peace, reflect on his joy and receive him. Let's just spend one or two minutes responding to God. Lord Jesus, thank you for coming to us. Thank you.
thank you for entering into our world. Thank you for entering into our mess. To the pain and the turmoil, God, you, aro- you, you arrived. Thank you. We honor you as our King and Lord. And God, I just pray for each one of us here that we would live every day with hearts that welcome you and respond to you and are humble before you say, you are our king. We love and worship you. God, I pray for each person (coughs) here today that pray for each person that's been living in, in, in pain and turmoil. Maybe it's this week. Maybe it's just today. Maybe it's the last month. But God, right now, come by your spirit, come. God, the same spirit that raised Christ Jesus from the dead is among us, working and living. Jesus, you are the same yesterday, today, and forever. Jesus, you came into a mess. You came into turmoil and pain. God, that's true for us today, and we hold on to it. You are a good and faithful God. God, I pray that you would meet each one here today. Oh, Lord, come by your spirit. Minister your peace. Minister your joy. Minister your hope. Lord, for those who are far from family, God, I just pray that you would just comfort them during this Christmas season. God, those who are Far away, God, I I just pray, God, that you would just bring them close to your heart. You are Emmanuel, God with us. I just want to ask us today, I want to give the opportunity. I don't want to miss this opportunity. I want to pray for two two people here tonight, today. Number one, if you have been really struggling with a stressful situation. Maybe you're a Christian, but you've been going through some stuff and you kind of feel like Joseph and Mary where everything's kind of up in the air and everything's kind of a whirlwind. I want to pray with you. I want to pray with you this afternoon. I want to pray that God will minister his peace to you, minister his life and his joy to you. So if you would come up to the front, we would love to pray with you. And we have our leaders up front. We want to meet you and pray with you and pray God's blessing over your life. The second group of people is if you have never surrendered your life in humility to God and said, God, be my Lord. I want to receive Jesus as my Savior. I want to live the rest of my life with Jesus. We want to know you and we want to pray with you as well. It's the best thing in your life that you can do. I would ask you, if this is you, please come up to the front and meet with us as well. Tell us what it is that you want prayer for. Please, please don't let fear or pride prevent you from the greatest miracle in your life. There's a new life in Jesus. Each one of us, leaders, every Christian here, we've made that walk. We've come up to the front and said, I need Jesus. And so we want to be there for you as well as you do that. So if this is you, please come up to the front, pray with us. We would love to experience that miracle together with you. Let me just pray once more. And if this is you, please make your way up while we pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for the yearly reminder. We thank you for Christmas. And we can think upon your miracle, the love that you gave when you came and said, here I am. I'm coming into the world for you. We give of our hearts and our lives to you. And in in the busyness of the season, the busyness of of family and friends and, and 
events and parties and whatever it is, God, we take our time and we say, thank you, Jesus, for coming. Thank you for coming for us. We love you and we give our hearts to you. In your precious name, the name that is above all names, the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you guys all for coming. If any of you guys want prayer for these points or for any other points, please come up to the front. If not, God bless you. Thank you for coming today. Merry Christmas. Give somebody a hug. Bless them. These next 10 days, reflect on the love of Jesus. Amen. God bless you.